Today is Friday, September 13th, and we're going to go around the bases with our MLB insider at the New York Post. He is none other than John Heyman. John, how you doing, man? I'm good. How are you, Ryan? I'm doing well. The Yankees got another walk-off win, two in a row, uh, <laughs> two games up in the AL East. Since we last spoke, they've done a little bit of damage. Um, Juan Soto, first career walk-off for the Yankees, first since a national, which is crazy to, th- to hear and even say. Um, for you, John, in this Yankee squad, we know this is an important stretch. They're in the tight race for the AL pennant, uh, including the division, obviously. Where do you view this Yankee squad heading down the stretch here and how they're getting a lot of these guys healthy and now they have six men in a rotation? What's your take on it right now? Yeah, I mean, I think this was probably the most encouraging couple of weeks that they've had all season. I mean, look at it and realize that Clark Schmidt is back and looking good. Heel is back and looking good. Many teams only have two or three viable starting pitchers. They have six. Cortez has actually been pretty good. He's going to have to be in the bullpen in the play come playoff time, I believe. Uh, okay. you know, I don't know if he's going to be thrilled by that, but uh, you got they got six really good starters right now. Garrett Cole is going great. He's got like a 1-4 ERA over his last six starts. No runs in three, no earned runs in three out of the last five. So right now the rotation is looking as good as it has. I, you know, I, I know they don't want to give Aaron Judge a day off. I, I just think it's the schedule. It's getting to him playing center field, so difficult. You know, both he and Bobby Wood Jr. are now struggling. They're playing premium, difficult positions. And uh, right now, I think it's another encouraging sign that they're doing it without him really contributing from an offensive standpoint. Yeah, it. it I know it's like a cliche or, or a lot of people are saying it, what baseball player isn't dealing with something at this time of year, right? As you're in September and the season's winding down. Judge, big man, playing center field every single day. He doesn't want to take a day off. Uh, he's definitely cooled off batting 195 in September. Uh, the home run, home run drought is the longest in his career. Uh, it's not, you know, he still has 50 plus home runs, 125 <laughs> ribbies, which is pretty crazy. Good. You know, it's pretty good. Yeah, pretty um, good. The one thing I want to touch on that you had said right there, Nestor Cortez, that's the guy you think is going to go to the bullpen, not Clark Schmidt, not Luis Heal, huh? No, I mean, I think Luis Heal has been dominant at times. And if you look at his overall record, it's been really superb i think he's an rookie of the year candidate early on he was even a cy young candidate uh you know he throws 97 98 i think that's the kind of guy that teams like going in the postseason and you know i think people had suggested maybe he could be their closer or whatever but i i think he needs a prominent role and uh you know i i think that cortez has done it before he can do it no he's not thrilled about it but uh I would certainly take heel over him and, and look at Clark Schmidt's ERA. I mean, it's one, one of the best on the team. And I, I know he was out a long time, but uh, he's got the potential to dominate teams as well. So I think those two pitchers really just have better stuff than yeah. Nestor. So yeah. I, those are, I would pick both either one of them over Nestor at this point. I can see that stuff is playing for you, especially in the, in the postseason where you need that swing and miss, but there's also that potential because the bullpen right now, and Aaron Boone has said this, and, I, and that's another thing I, to touch on here is the, the closer spot. Clay Holmes comes in in the seventh, I believe last night. Uh, it's just, or the uh, seventh or eight. No, no, it was an extras last night. Sorry. It was an extras last night. So, the, you know, it, they've gotten to Luke Weaver in close situations that Tommy Canley pitched the ninth last night. It's going to be, seems like a closer by committee role is that how you see it moving forward, considering? I think so. Yeah. I, th- I don't think they have any choice. And that's been the weakness of the team is the overall bullpen. Uh, you know, I mean, Canley's numbers look pretty good. Uh, you know, do I trust him as the closer? No, not really. Luke Weaver, he's not a proven closer. Well, he did get his first save. He's done an overall good job. Clay Holmes has good stuff. Obviously, had 11 blown saves. It worries people. I think some of that was bad luck, but they don't have a lot of swing and miss guys. They don't have a lot of dominance in that bullpen. And, I mean, that is their weakness. You know, they hoped that Mark Leiter would help solve things. He really has not done that. There were a lot of relievers out there, but they cost a lot, right? Philly gave up four Good prospects for Estevez, who's a free agent after the year. Same thing with the Padres with Tanner Scott. And, I mean, neither of those teams was as needy as the Yankees in terms of the closer position. And they gave up a ton. The Yankees didn't do it. Can't really kill the Yankees. They got Jazz Chisholm uh, before the deadline. Uh, they tried in the bullpen. But, uh, you know, I think they they know that bullpen was really the weakness. And I guess they were hopeful that Mark Leiter, who had <laughs> – 
the number of strikeouts with the Cubs was going to do it, but uh, has not done it to this point, at least. Look, John, we we are very highly critical of the Yankee squad just because we the, the prestige, the legacy, the fans that hold them to a higher standard than most fan groups, I would say, are fan bases to their teams. And granted, this is the team that has the best record in the AL. Like they're they're most likely going to win the pennant as long as nothing crashes and burns. But that's still a, a <laughs> you're big, giving the pennant, huh? <laughs> I think that they they're playing better baseball, but right. That bullpen, to your point, is definitely going to be the downfall of this team at the end of the day just because they didn't address it at the deadline, like you said. Mark Leiter was not a good acquisition, bottom line. And they missed out on a guy like Tanner Scott and a guy like Estevez in a year that you have Juan Soto playing MVP-like baseball and Aaron Judge having one of the best historic seasons offensively up until recently. It feels like a missed opportunity there a little bit to address that one weakness that you had on the squad. But I know we're being super picky. They say they're going to play a uh, closer by committee. Right. Let's see how it plays out. Aaron Boone's going to have to put that manager cap on. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's the Yankees. We are being super picky. And, uh, you know, they brought it on themselves by saying it's a, a failure if they don't win the World <laughs> yes. Series. Well, they've had how many failures in a row since 2009? So, you know... Uh, Hey, it's New York. They can it's take New it. York. You know? It's New and York. I, it's right. Sometimes when I make a negative comment about another team, the fans go nuts. Uh, if I do it about the Yankees, everybody's okay, okay with it. because we're Everyone's okay. And we're they're tough. Yeah, we're they're... toughened up here in New York. Yeah, That's right. And we agree with you most of the time when you're critical of the teams <laughs> anyway. So now let's move to the team in Queens. Uh, the Mets, what a win against the Toronto Blue Jays to win that series. Francisco right. Lindor. Uh, hits that home run in the ninth after being no hit for eight innings. And then they just explode in the ninth inning, win a 6-1 six, six game. Uh, this Mets team, they're trying to lock down that wild card spot. They have a monster series coming up against the Braves. What do you think about this Mets squad? I know you talked to Sean Manaya this week on the show. You all should listen to that with John and Joel, that conversation you have with them. But what are you thinking about this Mets squad? Yeah, I'm pretty good. I mean, uh, you know, obviously they're not in yet. And I think uh, fan graphs or whomever gives them about a 55% chance about the same as the Braves uh, to get in uh, in some way. And uh, look, the Padres and the Diamondbacks haven't locked it up yet. So if they don't catch the Braves or beat out the Braves, I should say, because they are a game ahead now, uh, maybe they can catch one of those two teams as well. So they're in pretty good position. The negative there is that schedule, as you referenced, uh, they've got the Milwaukee coming up. They got seven, six or seven games against, I think seven against Philly. Not easy. Uh, you know, with Braves. Philly. Yeah, so, I mean, they got a tough schedule to play it out. Uh, I get it. I mean, the schedule's a little tougher than others because they play the Yankees more because of the uh, wanting the uh, gate attraction. But they beat the Yankees all four times, so worked out for them. But, uh, you know, they do have a little bit tougher schedule. Uh, you got to feel pretty good about it. I mean, I has been great. You mentioned him. Severino's been great. Peterson, except for the last start, has been great. Uh, the bullpen looks good. Uh, you know, their bullpen looks in better shape. And at the beginning of the year, even though the stats were okay, their bullpen was really a horror show. I mean, yes. I hate to say it, but uh, the losses were terrible, uh, mostly by Diaz. Now, Diaz has been good lately. Uh, yeah. You know, they got a lot of guys back there who are doing a good job. Maton was a good pickup. Uh, they made a lot of good moves. I wrote about 20 best moves uh, the teams have made this year. And uh, the Mets certainly have made a few of them. And it uh, seems like most of their moves have really worked out nicely. He gives a little different look. They have a lot of strikeout guys in that bullpen. He's a little bit softer thrower, but he's getting guys out. And that bullpen looks good. The rotation looks good. Uh, and the lineup is deep. I mean, if you get Francisco Alvarez going and he's showing it here and there, mm -hmm. that would be, that'd be huge. But certainly... Uh, you know, they need Alonzo to probably do a little bit He's got to be consistent, right? He's yeah. got to be more consistent. He's got over 30 home runs. So right. we know he's had a high, he's kind of like the Yankees. He's at a high bar, right? He's at over 30 home runs, and we're critical of him every other week. So, uh, you know, we need him to get going, or the Mets too. And Vientos was great all year. Oh, Obviously, man. the last few days, not quite as great, but uh, uh, and Lindor has been outstanding. So uh, they're they're in good shape, but that schedule's a bear. Yeah, currently going into tonight, Friday against the Phillies, uh, the Mets enter two games back from the Diamondbacks in that third wild card spot, one game up on the Braves. Schedule is tough to your point, but the, the lineup is the one thing I think, you know, Mets fans are concerned about recently just because it has slowed down up until that Lindor yeah. home run and then they exploded for six runs in that ninth. 
it's definitely been tough sl- sledding for them. They do need to get Nimmo going as well. Uh, you know, guys that they count on. The McNeil injury did hurt them a little bit, um, you know, because he was providing a little bit offensively yeah, for them. Very good. He's been good in the second half. And yeah. Iglesias has been another great signing, right? I yeah. mean, he's hitting 300. He's got great hands. It's a real mystery why he said to sign four minor league deals in a row. He's really good. But obviously, great the depth too. The depth is a, a, an issue because if you have Iglesias as a backup, that's a little different than Eddie Alvarez as your backup, right? And they never called up Acuna. I know they say great things, but they, I think they were a little bit disappointed in the season that he did have with an OPS under 700 down there. And the, his, um, Eddie Alvarez is the second guy who's not a proven guy who they've tried there as the backup second baseman now to Iglesias. So that'll tell you something about that. But at the major league level, I think they got to feel really good about the way things have gone. It's supposed to be a transition year, right? Peterson's been great. The signings, Manaya and Severino, outstanding. Yep. Uh, Fientos has stepped forward. Um, the only real negatives has been some of the kids have not performed like they probably would have liked this year. Some of them injuries. Uh, Beatty obviously didn't do it. Then he was hurt. He was he looked good in the minors. And actually, if he was healthy now, he would have been the natural guy to call up because He's been playing some second as well as third, but uh, that was a, a disappointment. But generally, it's been a great year for the Mets. And like I said, if they can get through that schedule, they, they deserve to get in. Yeah, well, we'll be interested to see if Christian Scott and Kodai Singa can make their way back into that rotation deep or even the bullpen. You know, I know Singa said he could be he could be open to something like that, but that would only deepen their pitching staff, which can carry you in the playoffs, especially if you're going to come in as a wild card. John, let's turn our attention to the MVP race. I saw you wrote about Bobby Witt Jr. and how he is closing the gap a little bit on Aaron jo- Aaron Judge there. Uh, talk to me about this. What do you think about this AL MVP race? Yeah, I don't know if he's closing the gap, but I, I think he's been in the race all the time. Uh, you know, Judge has been struggling offensively the last couple of weeks. Same with Witt Jr. Uh, I, you know, I just kind of like the all around guy, so I'm not saying that it's a guarantee that Otani and Judge deserve it. Do, do I think they're going to win? Yes. I think it's very, very, very likely that Otani and Judge win the MVPs. Otani probably even more likely than Judge at this moment. But uh, I do think uh, that Bobby Wood Jr. and Francisco Lindor deserve to be in the conversation. I mean, if you look at the war numbers, they're basically split in both leagues. Uh, Judge has got a tiny bit of an advantage on Wood Jr. and Otani, a very tiny bit of advantage over Lindor between the two wars. They're ba- they're basically split. Um, so, I mean, and that reflects the fact that Lindor is an outstanding shortstop, that Witt is an outstanding shortstop, and they play both ways. This is why a DH has never won, right? A DH is going to have to have a great, great, great year to win the MVP. Uh, you know, Don Baylor was the closest. He played he had 65 games at DH, but... Otani's a full-time DH, so he gets no points for a defense. And I think in one of them, you give him negative points for being a DH, and I get it. I mean, I do think that Lindor has been a major factor defensively. Now, if if Otani goes 50-50 and you're a voter, you're not going to want to take the heat of picking Lindor. Let's say Lindor has a slightly higher war or something like that at the end. Uh, you know, it's easy to go with a guy who went 50-50. I look at last year with Betts was all around, and I was on Betts' bandwagon up until September, and that's where Acuna kind of took over, went 40-70, and he ended up being unanimous. Until September, Betts had the war advantage, and, you know, he was great in the outfield, great in the infield, and offensively not that far behind. So, uh, I kind of like the all around. It's not an East Coast bias or West Coast or Central bias that I like Bobby Wood Jr. being in there. I like Francisco Lindor in, in there. I like the all around. Uh, maybe I'm biased on all around, but I, I like I said, I do think Judge and Otani are leading, and I do think they're very, very, very likely to win. I my only pushback here, John, is and and this is with Otani discussion with Lindor. I, I, first off, I think Judge is the MVP, clear cut. I just because I, I he's played center field, a position that he's not normally playing in. He normally is the right fielder, but Juan Soto is not playing right field every day. And I think he'd be a better right fielder, obviously, compared to center field. And you could see it wearing down on him. I, I think he'll never admit it, but it's a lot to play center field at Yankee Stadium or any stadium. And he's done it. Tr- he's done it to the best of his abilities. I feel like the thing with Lindor, and to you, your point, he plays a hell of a shortstop position, and he's the best player on his team. And he's helped carry this Mets team into the playoffs. Otani plays on a 
we think very stacked <laughs> roster yeah. and lineup. He's surrounded right. by two other MVP candidates in Freeman and Betts. There's there's more there. I feel like with Lindor, I understand the 50 50 is yep. a historically great thing, but when it comes down to it, Lindor is putting together an insane offensive season for himself, and he's doing it defensively. The people are arguing that if Otani wins the DH. MVP this year he's just going to win it every year because next year he'll start pitching again <laughs> and people are just going to be like just give it to him every single year because well I'm okay with that if he deserves it every year he should get it every year I, I have nothing there's nothing wrong with winning it every year Barry Bonds won it every year and illegally so you know I was, wasn't necessarily in favor of that Otani's doing it uh, legally ethically nothing wrong with the way he's doing it. he's turned himself into a base deal but I'm with you watching Lindor and I get pushback from people who so say, look, he only has 84 RBIs. He's a leadoff hitter. How many RBIs hitter. do you want him to have? Come on. That or the 270 or so batting average. Uh, you know, batting average is kind of been a little bit downgraded over the last two de couple decades. There are other metrics to look at. But I, Lindor's case goes beyond the metrics. And it goes to the narrative, which he's a leader. He's helped Vientos. He's helped Iglesias. He's helped the whole team. Uh, I do think that is a positive. Will it be weighed? And if it is weighed, is how does it weigh against a potential 50-50? It's going to be tough. I think I think it's going to be very tough. But I do think there is a conversation to be had. And what you said about Judge absolutely playing center field, and he volunteered to do it. He wants to do it. It's wearing him down. I think that's why he's not hitting home runs like he usually does lately. But I would say with Junior, same thing. Playing shortstop, not easy. And if you look at the look at the close and late stats. What's the best in, in the league? Uh, you know, he's hitting 380 uh, with runners in scoring position. Also 380 close and late. And this is a team that won 56 games last year and on pace to win more than 30 more games this year. So he's got a good narrative, yeah. too. Uh, so that's why I think there is a conversation to be had. That said, am I going to be shocked if the vote is 28 to 2 in both cases? No, I'm not going to be shocked. But I certainly think it's worth having that conversation I agree right now Otani leads. I agree right now Judge leads. I think it's still a debate, though. Still a debate, and we're looking forward to seeing how it develops over the coming weeks to end the season. Let's bring this all home, John. Your most disappointing team of the week. Who is it? Right. This is what everybody's waiting for. I'm, <laughs> I'm going with the Blue Jays. You know, I, I tweeted it about how they don't play the game well or right, and I got, boy, did I get pushback from Toronto. <laughs> they didn't like it. All year, I'm reading tweets from people in Toronto complaining about the team, but you do it, and they go nuts. You know, then they made it personal, and those people get blocked. So, you know, then there's complaints that I'm blocking. Hey, they made it personal. I'm not being personal. I have nothing against the Toronto Blue Jays. They're not playing well. They don't look good. They're a major disappointment. And, you know, not to pat myself on the back because my predictions generally do stink. I did say they uh, predict – I think we had in the uh, – uh, preview section. Yes. Who did you predict to be the most disappointing? I did predict the Blue Jays to be the mis most disappointing. And I feel a little bit bad because I don't think it's the manager. I don't think it's on the manager. I think Mark Shapiro isn't making all the calls. And Russ Atkins is the guy who stands up and answers all the questions. You know, he's not the one who's ultimately making the calls either. And, you know, maybe he pays, maybe the manager pays. I don't know. But Mark Shapiro is the one making all the decisions, I believe. That's what I'm told, and that's what I've read. Steve Simmons wrote a great, a great column in Toronto. I'm not sure which of the Toronto papers he works for anymore, but he's a very good columnist, and he really nailed it. I don't know what his re the reaction that he got was, but mine was very negative. And then lately, in the last couple of days, it's gotten much, much better as people realize that I am correct, that they are a major disappointment. I was watching the Met game, and I've watched them several games. I haven't seen them 150 games, obviously, but I've seen them several games, and it was just third baseman with an overthrow. The right fielder throws off the wrong foot. Uh, then the bullpen blows up with all the walks. And, you know, this is what – and I know they all want to say, oh, it's the bullpen. If the bullpen was better, it would be in the – play. it's more than the bullpen. They're not playing well. And I don't want to pick on the manager because, again, I don't think it's his fault. They set themselves up. Everyone thought they were getting Otani. Yeah, it started there. They didn't there. get Otani. They got, you know, nice players. I like Kevin Kiermaier, great defender. I like Isaiah kiner Falefa, great defender. Justin Turner resurrected his career. He made a great career, but he's not He's not Otani. You don't get Otani. You can't pivot and then get yeah. three guys who are not you know, in the ballpark of, I, I guess nobody's in the ballpark of Otani, but 
They needed to do something more than they did do. Obviously, they've had some bad luck with Bichette. Who knows what happened with Manoa? They got issues going on, but they've been a disappointment. And yeah. I'm sorry that their fans didn't take it well. I, th- I thought they would agree with me. They've been saying it all year. And it's I, been a I collection repeat. of talent to talented players just disappointing yeah. overall. Kevin Gosman, Bo Bichette. I mean, uh, yeah, I don't George think Springer. Gosman's 100%. Uh, right, you but know, George think, Springer. But the point is they have all these talented right. players, and it just has not right. collect, collectively – accomplished players, right? It's not collectively worked out for them, and it's not no. turned into a winning season for them this year. And Vlad's having a great year, yeah. and uh, they're going to have to pay the piper there, as I've written. Uh, Rafael Devers is the uh, comp, and that is on the low end. You know, everyone was thinking $200 million for Vlad Guerrero. I think we're looking at $300 million for him, right? I mean – who would you rather have, Rafael Devers or Vlad Guerrero Jr.? At least Vlad Guerrero Jr. has a position where he's average, even if it's first base. Rafael De- Devers is a, is a poor third baseman. You say so, that, but then I watch him absolutely rip. He, rip. he uh, But like you also just – He makes some ev- spectacular plays, spectacular but he plays. makes a lot of bad ones. He's not a good third baseman overall. <laughs> he makes some great plays, but he makes a lot of bad ones too. He's not considered a good third baseman. Eventually, he'll probably have to play first. I've already seen some speculation. Are they going to trade Casas? Don't trade Casas. He's he's. It's like waiting for your stock to go down to one and selling. You don't sell now, do you? I hope not. John's giving us stock <laughs> advice now and everything, and he's giving well, us. Well, you don't sell low. I mean, that's a, obvious. I know. I know. <laughs> John, appreciate it's not, not in depth stock advice. I know. Well, listen, I can't give anybody stock advice, but listen, neither can I. But at the end of the day, I appreciate you giving us all your insight on baseball news and what's going on with the locals. As always, thanks for going around the bases. Appreciate you, John. All right. Thanks, Ryan.